There is a word from the Lord. Let us pray. Oh God, I thank you for this opportunity to feed your sheep. Now I pray, God, that you will feed me, speak to me, and speak through me as I bring the word from thus saith the Lord. God, I pray that this word will not go out void, that it will take good root and bear good fruit, prosperous fruit, generous fruit to your honor and to your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Our scripture for today comes from Matthew, the 25th chapter, verses 31 through 46. But when the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, then he will sit upon his glorious throne. All the nations will be gathered in his presence and he will separate the people as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will place the sheep at his right hand and the goats at his left. Then the king will say to those on his right, come, you who are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the creation of the world. For I was hungry and you fed me. I was thirsty and you gave me a drink. I was a stranger and you invited me into your home. I was naked and you gave me clothing. I was sick and you cared for me. I was in prison and you visited me. Then these righteous ones will reply, Lord, when did we ever see you hungry and feed you or thirsty and give you something to drink or a stranger and show you hospitality or naked and give you clothing? When did we ever see you sick or in prison and visit you? And the king will say, I tell you the truth. When you did it to one of the least of these, my brothers and sisters, you were doing it to me. Then the king will turn to those on the left and say, away with you, you cursed ones, into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his demons. For I was hungry and you didn't feed me. I was thirsty and you didn't give me a drink. I was a stranger and you didn't invite me into your home. I was naked and you didn't give me clothing. I was sick and in prison and you didn't visit me. Then they will reply, Lord, when did we ever see you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or in sick or in prison and not help you? And he will answer, I tell you the truth. When you refuse to help the least of these, my brothers and sisters, you were refusing to help me. And they will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous will go into eternal life. The title of the sermon today is, Do You Understand the Assignment? Chapter 25 of Matthew concludes Jesus' series of farewell sermons that he began preaching in the previous chapter. He had already explained to his disciples that he was going to die. And in this chapter, he preached about what we need to do to get ready for when he comes back. And in this text, we hear Jesus telling a parable, uh, an earthly story with a heavenly meaning. It was his favorite preaching method, and he always made them relatable and relevant. And to borrow from the recently departed Bill Lewis, simple enough so that a fool would understand it. Simple, but deep. In the parable of the sheep and the goats, he tells us what will happen when he does come back. And at this point in his sermon, he tells us that when he comes back, that he will judge us on how well we have carried out our earthly assignment to be merciful and gracious to the least of these. Now, dependent on the verdict, we will either be blessed to spend eternity in a state of everlasting joy as we dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever and ever, or we will be sentenced to spend eternity in a state of everlasting misery in hell. Do you understand the assignment? Jesus had an unequaled and 
unparalleled once in a forever assignment. Before Adam and Eve were evicted from the Garden of Eden, uh, God had assigned, and assigned him to Operation Salvation. Before there were any other people on this earth, Jesus had been given the assignment to crush the head of Satan. In other words, to defeat him, to overcome the power and the penalty of sin for humanity, to set the captives free, to proclaim victory over the grave, to bring us back into a right relationship with God that Adam and Eve had messed up in paradise because they got the big head. But God so loved Adam and Eve and the world that he looked beyond their faults and my faults and your faults and he saw our knees and he extended eternal mercy and grace to all who have sinned and fallen short of his glory by sending his only son, Jesus, from their heavenly home to carry out the earthly assignment of reconciliation and redemption. He thought we were worth saving, so he sacrificed his life. He thought we were worth keeping, and so he cleaned us up inside. Operation Salvation mandated that he leave the comfort of heaven and travel through the womb of a woman and declare himself the son of God to church folk, some of whom would end up being his worst enemies, be crucified, buried, and then rise up from the grave and ascend to heaven all within 36 months. It sounded like a mission impossible, but we know with God, all things are possible. If you believe in God, the Father Almighty, and in Jesus Christ, his son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. And on the third day, he arose from the dead, ascended in heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of God, the Father Almighty, interceding for you and me. If you say he saved you from your sins, then you know that Jesus understood his assignment. At the Passover dinner, he understood his assignment. He knew he was going to be betrayed by his friend Judas, but he had dinner with him anyway. In the Garden of Gethsemane, he understood the assignment. In his agony, he cried out, Father, if you are willing, please take this cup of suffering from me. But in his next breath, he declared, not my will, but thy will be done. And when they crucified him, he understood the assignment. The first thing out of his mouth after they nailed him to the cross was an act of reconciliation. Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. And when he said, it is finished, after six hours of suffering on a cross, he understood that his earthly assignment as the son of man was finished and that he was going back home to heaven as the son of God. And so his last words on the cross were, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. Jesus understood the assignment. Thank God we don't have a death by cross assignment. The one thing that needs crucifying is our flesh. And Jesus sent us the Holy Spirit to do that instead of nails and a cross. And so when Jesus, our reconciler, our redeemer, comes back to judge us, are we going to be on the side of the sheep who understood the assignment, who loved everybody, who showed grace and mercy and forgiveness to everybody, especially the least of these? Or are we going to be on the side of the goat? And I'm not talking about the greatest of all time. I'm talking about the guilty of all time. Oh, today begins the last week, the 10th week in our family devotional series, Growing a Healthy Church. And pastors and ministerial staff have been preaching from weekly themes. And by virtue of me volunteering to preach on this Sunday, I got the last chapter in that series entitled Healthy Churches Excel More. And it's basically a summary of all the qualifications that you've heard about over the past nine weeks, all of the qualifications of a healthy church with the expectation that we can do better. We can do more. 
And the scripture that comes from the series this week is from 1 Thessalonians, the fourth chapter that talks about living to please God and loving one another. And I thought, that the scripture I chose for today just fits right in. Being merciful and gracious to the least of these is living to please God. He said, what you have done unto the least of these, you have done it unto me. In 1965, Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. gave the commencement address at Oberlin after receiving an honorary doctorate. And he told the students that the time is always right to do what's right. And after his speech, he stopped to give someone an autograph and he said to them, all I am saying is simply this, in a real sense, all life is interrelated. All men are caught in an inescapable network of mutuality, tied in the single garment of destiny. Whatever affects one directly affects all indirectly. I can never be what I ought to be until you are what you ought to be. And you can never be what you ought to be until I am what I ought to be. This is the interrelated structure of reality. If I was hungry and you fed me, I was thirsty and you gave me a drink. I was a stranger and you invited me into your home. I was naked and you gave me clothing. I was sick and you cared for me. I was in prison and you visited me. Whatever you have done to the least of these, you're interrelated. You've done it to me. Do you understand the assignment? For I was hungry and you fed. Brown Chapel, the Good Samaritan ministers have excelled in their job of physically feeding the community, even in the midst of COVID these past two years, but folk are hungry for more than food. Some of us have family and friends who are starving for reconciliation and repair of relationships that went sour because somebody's feelings were hurt. So they're holding a grudge. Those broken and bitter relationships need to be fed with forgiveness and kindness and mercy, look beyond the faults and see the needs. I challenge you this week that if you wanna excel, if you wanna do better, if you wanna be better, feed that family member, feed that friend, feed that enemy this week with some forgiveness. And I'm sorry, but please forgive me. I love you. Let's just start over. That's nourishment that can fill up an empty hole in someone's heart and renew a right spirit within both of you because we are interrelated. And what we do for one, we do for the other. Do we understand the assignment? I was thirsty and you gave me a drink. Too much sickness and too many deaths and too much loss and too much crying can dry up a soul. Make your soul thirsty and parched. Too many of us have been in the valley of death in a desert of grief and bereavement for too long. Again, this past two years, folk are thirsty for some joy, thirsty for some peace. We need to speak life and speak hope and speak encouragement to those in the deserts of sadness. But before we lead them to nourishment, to water, we need to speak to ourselves, drink for ourselves. And then we can lead the thirsty to the well that never runs dry, that flows even in a desert, even in a valley, even while we are yet grieving. For whoever drinks from his fountain will never thirst again. And we can drink until our cup runs over. We can drink until our cup runs over with joy. We can drink until our cup runs over with peace. We can drink until our cup runs over with hope. We can drink from the fountain that never runs dry. Do you understand 
the assignment. I was a stranger and you invited me into your home. Now, a stranger doesn't have to be somebody you don't know. It could be someone that you haven't talked to or seen in a while. That honor, that cousin that you used to call every year on their birthday but you haven't done so in the last 10 years. That friend you used to send a card to every now and then. Could be that new member that you've never had a personal conversation with, a new coworker. Invite them into the home of your heart and show them some kindness, some mercy, some love. Oh, the Ukrainians are strangers that we need to invite into our homes, into the homes of our hearts, into the altars of our hearts in our living rooms, in our family rooms of our hearts. I don't know if you saw the video, help me Jesus, of a little boy who was walking down the street with his backpack. His body was just, oh, you could see he was just wrecked with anguish and he was crying, dragging. It touched my heart so. I set up an altar in my heart for that little boy. And for all of the Ukrainian people. Strangers, invite them into your heart. Do we understand the assignment? I was naked and you gave me clothing. You know, we all have challenges and issues that we deal with. Some are visible and some are hid. And so for those who cannot hide their challenges, physical, mental, or emotional, I consider them naked. So how do you clothe them? Hmm. With understanding and empathetic hearts, respecting their right to equality, treating them like we want to be treated like we're all part of the same fabric, maybe even go above and beyond without being patronizing. Open the door for somebody with limited mobility, but don't be judgmental. Be respectful and ask first. Don't look and judge with our eyes. Remember that God looks on our hearts and he's gonna judge the thoughts, the intents and the desires of our hearts. Do we understand? the assignment. I was sick and you cared for me. In addition to the obvious physical kinds of sickness, there's also spiritual sickness. There's spiritual illness, meanness, evilness, devilish, demonic, hatefulness, spitefulness, selfishness, unforgiveness, always bitter, vindictive, and I could go on and on. You know anybody suffering from spiritual illness? And remember, when you point a finger, you got three coming back at you. How do we care for the spiritually sick? But after we pray, after we call on the Lord to help them, we give them medicine from the fruit of the spirit. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. And then we make sure that we don't get spiritually sick by examining our own selves daily because we can't give what we don't have. Do we understand the assignment? I was in prison and you visited me. Too many of us are bound in our minds by the guilt and the shame and the couldas and the wouldas that keep us locked up and locked out of living an abundant life on this side of Jordan. We need to revisit the fact that where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. That whom the sun sets free is free indeed. Free to have joy, free to have peace, and free to have a calm mind. For he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. Every yoke we've been holding on to has been destroyed. Every burden we're trying to carry has been lifted. Every sin has been erased. Let it go. <laughs> if Jesus thought you were worth saving, then who are you? to think that you are not worthy of being free.
Do you understand the assignment? Well, in closing, and since this is Women's Month, I'm gonna call the roll of some sisters who understood their assignment to the least of these. Harriet Tubman understood her assignment was to take in strangers on her train and free them from the prison of slavery. Fanny Lou Hamer understood her assignment as a civil rights caregiver when she herself grew sick and tired of being sick and tired of racism. Our own Rosa Parks, the mother of the civil rights movement, understood that her assignment was to stand up for the least of these by sitting down. Sometimes our assignment makes you scratch your head. Nicole Hannah-Jones, the author of the 1619 Project, understood her assignment was to expose the nakedness of slavery. Kanye West wrote a song last year called Praise God. It reached number 20 on the U.S. Billboard of 100. It features vocals from his mother, the late Dr. Donda West, and she is reciting an excerpt from a poem by Gwendolyn Brooks, who in 1950 became the first African-American to win a Pulitzer Prize. As a matter of fact, she was the poet that was most talked about when I was in elementary school. And the poem she wrote is entitled Speech to the Young, Speech to the Progress Toward. Now, my interpretation is that it's a warning to the folk who try to keep you from doing your assignment, who try to keep you down, who try to dim your light, steal your joy, rob your peace. People who jealous of you getting ahead while they dragging their feet, putting off doing the assignment, sleeping while you working. These folk could very well be the goats or the tares among the wheat. And the excerpt from the poem goes like this. Say to them, say to the down keepers, the sun slappers, the self soilers, the harmony hushes. Even if you are not ready for the day, it will not always be night. At some point, Jesus is coming back. Whether we are ready for the day or not, whether we understood the assignment or not. And for those who understood the assignment, you will hear the call from Jesus. Come, you who are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me drink. I was a stranger and you welcomed me. I was naked and you clothed me. I was sick and you cared for me. I was in prison and you visited me. Do you understand the assignment? God bless you.